Welcome to another tutorial part of this Django series. In this one, we are building a filter form. And in this video, we're going to get started with filtering our data. Now, if you'd like to follow along, you can just go to the DJ filter repository on GitHub. You can clone it or download it. And once you've got it set up in your editor, then let's get started. So I have my server running and we can see this in the browser. This is what it looks like. We've got the form itself showing and what we want to do is actually get the values of these inputs on the server side and then filter our data based on those. So in this video, we're going to focus on these three search bars and we're going to take a look at how to filter based on these certain inputs and certain types of filters. Now, before getting to the back end, it's important to know that whenever you are building these forms, in pure HTML, you're not using Django to generate them for you, then you need to make sure that each input has a name. So right now, if we were to go to those templates and just check out the form, none of these inputs actually have names. They have IDs and everything else, but we need to input a name because that's how we get the value of that query parameter when it's passed in. So for example, if I come here and I search and I just hit enter, then you can see there's no question, there's just a question mark, but no query parameters. So for example, it would say title underscore contains equals to, and then some kind of input that we put here. So first we're gonna go and add some names in here. Okay, so I've added some names to the inputs and just so you can see them, there's title contains as the first search bar, then title exact for the second search bar, title or author for the third one and then for the various other inputs you've got view count min view count max date min date max category and reviewed and i've also just fixed up the html file itself just adding correct titles and fixing up the nav bar as well and so you don't have to worry too much about that you can just get that from the repository but the main thing to take away here is just the names. So now that we have that, we can actually enter something here. So for example, if the title contains red and you search for it, then you get title contains equals red. So the query parameter is title contains, the value is red. So now all we do is just go to the back and actually grab those values. So we're gonna go into the view and here we're going to get those values from the request. So the request is a get request. So that means that to access every variable, you would say request.get.get and then the name of the query parameters. So in our case, title contains was that first one. So we can just come here and say title contains equals to that. And we can then say print that out. So we can take a look at that and we'll just send that again and if we take a look then you can see red is being printed out because that's the value of that query parameter so it's fairly straightforward we just have to do the same thing for the other ones so i'm going to call this the title contains query and we'll just paste that three times then this one's going to be the title exact query and we'll call this one title or author query. And then we'll just make sure that it's getting the exact query parameter. And so there we go. Now we have the correct query parameters being fetched. And now I'm just going to import the journal and we're just going to create the generic query set, which is all of the journals. And then we will just to render that in the context. So we'll say from core.models import journal. And we can actually just make this dot models. And right here at the top, we can then say query set equals journal.objects.all. And then we'll come here and say that the context equals to, and we'll just say the query set is this QS. And then context in there and then we can just go to the template and make sure that we actually render that out 
So right here after the form, we'll just put an HR and I'm just going to add a class of row. And then in here, I'm just going to create an unordered list and we'll loop through this list of the query set. So we'll say for journal in query set. And then we'll come here and say end for. Then just create a list item. And I'm not going to go through the entire process of creating this rendered item. You can just see the finished process because it's nothing fancy. It's just HTML. So you've got the list item, journal title, then you've got just a bunch of span tags with the author, the category, published date, view count, and reviewed. So it's all the fields of the journal. And there isn't much styling on this, but I'm just going to add one thing in here, which is going to be for the unordered list. And that's just to say that the list style type is none. That's just so that we don't get the dot showing for each list item. And so the server is running. So we can refresh this. And okay, we've got a little error there. So we'll just say categories.all. And okay, cool. So we have all of those journals being rendered out there. And now we're just going to test to see if these searches work. And I'm just going to change the styling a little bit here. So after each list item, we'll just put an HR just to read a little bit better. Cool. And now we can go back to here. And basically what we want to do is we want to filter this query set that we started off with based on these inputs. So what we're going to do is we'll just say if the title contains query is not an empty string and it is not none, then we're going to say that the query set equals to query set dot filter. So basically we're taking the starting point and filtering it down. And what do we want to filter it by well, specifically the title field? So we specify the title and here we use the double underscore I contains. And this is basically checks that the title contains the query that you've passed in. So we can say equals to that contains query. So let's test that out. We'll come back here and I'm going to get rid of that red in there as well. All right. So I'm going to search for something specific. So let's search for, we'll search for this in the name of love and put it there. Search. And there we go. We see that that's the only one that comes up and we can try another one as well. So maybe anything that contains U2. And now you can see those are all the journals that contain U2. And there you can see it there, U2, U2. So all of those posts or journals rather have a title that contains U2. And so now we can do the same thing for the other one. So we'll just copy that. And we'll say if title exact is not empty and it's not none, then we will say title I exact is that. And actually, instead of doing this with the title as an exact match, we're going to do this with an ID and the ID exact lookup is actually the same thing as just calling ID equals to that. So if you're not passing double underscore and then another filter, then by default, this is an exact lookup. And I'm just going to change this then from title to ID. And so if we take a look at this now, if we pass in, for example, three and search, then we get the journal that has an ID of three. And then one last thing on the contains is that I contains means it's case insensitive, whereas contains means it is not case insensitive, meaning it is case sensitive. So the I basically just means it's insensitive. So that's an important thing to know about I exact, exact, I contains and contains. So right now our I contains query means that the title is case insensitive, meaning it could be lowercase, uppercase. And then lastly, we're going to do our last 
query here. And this is going to be similar to what we've just done, but it's going to be based on the title or author query, which means you can pass in the title of the journal or you can pass in the name of the author. So in this case, we're doing an or query. And what that means is that we need to use Django's Q model because that allows us to create an or query. And to import this, we just have to go from django.db.models import Q. And then we just take that Q and we pass it in as a method in here. So we say Q of, and the first one is going to be the title. So we say where title double underscore contains or I contains equals to that query. And then we use the or sign and copy that entire thing again except this time it's not the title, it's going to be the author double underscore name. So we get the name field of the author and we can say I contains equal to that query. Now the trick here is that sometimes our query could actually return a result from both of these or statements. So what that means is that you're actually going to return the exact same post twice and that's obviously not good. So what you do is at the end, you call dot distinct. What that'll do is it'll make sure that if there is a journal entry that is found in each of these or statements, then it's only returned once. And so now we can go and test that out. So for example, here we have Guy as one of the authors. If I search for Guy, then now you can see there's significantly less and you can see they all have guy as the author and if we were to search for rock and roll hall of fame then you can see it's there as well and it's a bit difficult to find one that would definitely return two results but if you are able to find one you should see that the dot distinct will make sure that only one result is returned from those two and so that's all the filtering for this video if you've enjoyed it Leave a comment down below, let us know what you thought. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.